Welcome to my lecture online. A very interesting feature of Mercury, because it's an inferior planet, meaning it's closer to the Sun than we are, it sometimes will position itself exactly between us and the Sun. And then, when we look through a telescope, we can see a dark little disk travel across the surface of the Sun. Of course, you need to use special filters or you will damage your eyes. But what will happen is you'll see something like this, where slowly over time, the disk, that is the planet Mercury, will slowly travel across the disk of the Sun. And it turns out that happens roughly 13 times per century. Now the reason why it's fairly infrequent is because the orbital inclination of Mercury makes it such that it doesn't very often find, it, the planet Mercury doesn't find itself very often exactly on the ecliptic plane between the Earth and the Sun. It does so every once in a while at certain time intervals, and that has to do with the number of days it take, takes for Mercury to travel around the Sun. Now, there is between the year 1601 and 2300, there have been and will be, because we're looking in the past and we're looking in the future, we're calculating the future, there will be a total of 94 transits during that 700 year period. It turns out that of those 94, 31 will happen in the month of May, and 63 will happen in the month of November. About one-third happen in May, and two-thirds will happen in November. It turns out that the ones that happen in May will be such that the planet Mercury will be in a descending path. But in other words, as it goes around the Sun, it will go from above the ecliptic plane to below the ecliptic plane as it's transitioning across the disk of the Sun. When the transition happens in November, it will be in ascending mode, so it will be traveling from before the, below the ecliptic plane to above the ecliptic plane. Now also, because sometimes Mercury is close to the Sun and sometimes it's farther away because Mercury is in a very elliptical orbit, and the same will happen with the Earth, but not to the same extent, the angular size of Mercury and the angular size of the Sun will be different depending upon whether or not Mercury transitions or traverses or transits across the disk of the Sun in May versus November. In May, the ratio of the size of the disk, the angular size of Mercury, versus the angular size of the Sun, is the ratio of 1 in 158. In other words, the diameter of the disk as it appears in your telescope will be 1 over 158, the size of the Sun. But if the transition happens in November, then the ratio will be somewhat smaller, and the Sun will be 194 times the size of Mercury, in diameter, the apparent size. Now it turns out the separation between transits happen in certain time intervals. Either the, dis the, the difference in time between transits can be three and a half years, seven years, nine and a half years, or 13 years. Kind of interesting how that's set up, but it has to do with the fact that it takes about 58 and two-thirds of a day for Mercury to go around once, and of course the orbit of the Earth is one year. 365 and a quarter days, and they line up in such a way that there's almost a perfect lineup at those particular regular intervals. It turns out if you let 13 years go by, that's exactly equal, almost exactly equal to 54 orbits of Mercury, minus about two days. If you let 33 years go by, it's 137 orbits, minus 1.67 days, and what's really special is when you let 43 seconds go by between transits, that means there's 191 orbits of Mercury around the Sun, plus or minus, or in this case, plus 0.34 days. With other words, every 46 years, Mercury will go around the Sun almost exactly 191 orbits. And because of that, those transits will then happen with 46 year intervals in what we call a series. The same event will occur almost exactly the same because of this almost perfect alignment. And therefore, you'll see in the data record that there's intervals of 46 years between transits that seem to repeat over and over and over again. And we'll take a look at that at the next video. So it's kind of interesting how transits occur. Another thing to look at is that May transits are such that the sun position shifts about 200 arc seconds, which is about 3 arc minutes, 
between transits. That means the sun is almost always in the exact same place as it was in the previous May transit. And that's why the May transits keep happening over and over and over again for hundreds of years until the sun shifts in such a way that that will no longer happen and then transits will begin to be at a different time of the year. Different month, I should say. Same with November transits. The sun position shifts 100 arc seconds, which is only half as much, which means that the series that deals with November transits will last twice as long as the series that deal with May transits. In other words, these series can go on for hundreds and hundreds of years, where we see the transit of Mercury across the disk of the sun in May, versus the, or the transits where we see the, the, the disk of Mercury transit across the sun in November. And it's because of this almost perfect alignment between the orbits of the Earth and the orbits of Mercury. And so therefore, it's an interesting thing to keep track of these transits, and they're very predictable because of that. And that's how it's done.